Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Carruthers, and welcome to our weekly Moto America podcast, Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. I'm joined, as always, by Sean Vice, who's out in Ohio. I'm in Southern California, and this is episode 171. So we've done these uh, these podcasts 171 weeks in a row. I don't think we've missed one. We had to sh- we 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 did a we did a re-air of our one with Ben Spees um, around the holiday because we couldn't make anything work. But uh, other than that, we haven't missed one. So congratulations, Sean, and, and thanks for always being here with me once a week. You too. I mean, it's amazing that we've hung in there. It's like we're, we're so faithful to it. Paul, today I have to go by the name of Miami Vice because it's Ice Ice Baby here. In Ohio. You know, I was going to say that I didn't even want to talk about the weather today because we normally do. But like, honestly, if you saw, if you could look out my window right now, Ugh. you, there would be, you, vomit would come up in your throat and you'd have to swallow it. I'm vomiting <laughs> in my mouth right now, just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those, and, and Hayden, our Hayden Gillum, who's our guest, we'll bring him in in a minute. He's experienced this before. Cause I know he, he's lived, uh, he's lived at Josh Hayes's place in Oceanside before and spent winters out here training on his bicycle. So he knows exactly what I'm looking at. It's, you know, it's 65 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Like you just want to go get on your bicycle and start riding. So it's one of those days here. And I know you guys, I don't know about Hayden's weather, but I know you've been suffering a bit with this huge storm. So um, it's kind of like, I'm sorry, but not sorry kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, most times it's like, oh, we get four seasons. It's so beautiful. And it's like, then you get in February. I swear it's the worst month of the year for it. Just it's just always that way. And I always say it's the shortest, but it's the longest because we have to get through this, this junk, you know, so but yeah, I bet you Hayden's got some stuff going on down there. I mean, they're getting weird weather as far south as as Texas. And there's this weird band between rain ice and snow so when we get Hayden on we'll have to ask him which part of that precipitation he's getting but anyway so you're probably really looking forward to uh going to Daytona I know Daytona is a big deal for people back yes. that way that have that have uh bad winters more so than here obviously because I know from from all those years I went to Daytona it was always a big deal I mean it was guys taking their bikes out of storage and 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 getting down to Florida and enjoying the sunshine, it was kind of like it was a real spring break type feeling for those for those guys. I imagine that's going to be the similar situation for you. Yeah, huge. I mean, you know, when we've had the test at Coda in the, you know, that's always a little bit later. That's like in, I guess sometimes April or whatever. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, having Daytona back on the calendar and having it where it is kind of early in March, it. It really feels like when you're down there, it's it's a real big escape because up here, it's, there's still some more time where it, it's still not not too good. And especially further north of here, um, you know, it's almost midwinter break when for Daytona. And it's that's why so many of these biker guys, you know, come down from uh, the northeast or want to race there in clubs up there, too. I mean, it's just such a such a way to get away from it all. And, you know, Daytona's pretty consistent it's been weird at times though paul i mean it's interesting reading your your weekly uh uh compendium of all the past 30 uh episodes of the daytona 200 and those that that one time they had it at night and it was so cold i remember josh heron talking about how his fingers were cold but you know most times the weather is pretty decent for that thing for so early in the in the season and what um the 500 is coming up here pretty soon so um, that kind of gets things kicked off too, but uh, yeah, Daytona is absolutely a, a rite of spring, no, no doubt about it. All right, well, you have bad weather, but you're not paying five bucks a gallon for gas, so that's true. That. That's, that's very that's true. The, there's that. All yeah. right, well, our guest today, as we mentioned earlier, uh, is Hayden Gillum. Uh, last year, you know, you, you can never forget Hayden because he's a good boy and. He was showing up and doing some some baggers races for for Terry Vance on the on the Harley Davidson bagger, and then he showed up at pit race uh, for disrupt racing on a GSXR 1000, and just like that, I mean, this guy basically came off the couch, off a real job, and put it on the podium. And that that podium was, you know, there was there, there was he could have won that race. I mean, it was yeah. he was in the, he was in the hunt the entire time. Yep. 
so I guess that showed those guys on that team that uh, that he still had it. And uh, he now he's got an opportunity to do a full season of Moto America. He's going to do Superbike and, and Stock 1000 on GSXR 1000, um, Suzuki, obviously. And he's also going to do the Daytona 200. So I don't know about you, Sean, but it makes me extremely happy that we can have Hayden Gillum back in our series. Very happy. I mean, it's just, I, I told Jesse Wilka, the owner of that team, we were talking about it last night and I said, you, you can't, I can't even tell you how delighted I am and we all are to have Hayden back with us. I mean, Hayden, Hayden as a person is tremendous, but as a racer is just as tremendous in watching him race. I mean, when he used to race against JD and then they come in the press conference and it's like these dudes live together and they're sitting right next to each other. And it's like, you think it's going to be suddenly the Hatfields in the McCoys or something, you know, but they always manage to get through it. And I just love that. It's funny to me because I mean, there's, there's guys that are just motorcycle racers and, and I put Hayden Gillum into that category where he just, yes. you could put him on anything and not even give him a lot of time on the thing. And he would go out and show well. So, uh, I, and obviously that's what he was able to do at pit race. He just, I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, if I was one of those guys that got beat by him and I'd done the, and I'd been doing the whole season and I had my program together and my bike sorted out and a guy just showed up off the couch, um, on a non-familiar bike and beat me, I, I, I don't know what I'd do, but I wouldn't be real happy about it. Yeah. But anyways, let's, uh, let's bring Hayden in. Hayden, first of all, thanks for joining us and congratulations on being able to come back to Moto America full-time and quitting that day job of yours and, and being a racer again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be back in it. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a change. I tried, I, you know, I tried to get out of motorcycle racing, and, uh, you know, it just, it sucks you back in. And so it, yeah, it does. It's, it's going to be interesting. My dad's always said, cause obviously he used to race and he said, when, when you're not racing anymore, you, you realize that like, there's no better job than getting paid to race a motorcycle. Exactly. So I think that's the situation you're in. And I think, you know, I correct me if I'm wrong, but when you when you don't have the opportunity and then suddenly you have the opportunity it's better does that make sense i mean do you feel like oh my god i can't wait to get started and and all the things maybe you complained about in the past you're like Th those aren't even those aren't even issues anymore uh a, a little bit i know uh i know for me i just i i got burnt out and uh at the end of 2019 i was just i was kind of over it and tried to sell a bunch of my stuff and got rid of most of my bikes and uh and then in 20 2020 i did i went and did a couple flat track races and on a harley in the production twins and and then terry asked me if i wanted to ride the bagger at laguna and so i was like okay you know what i'll riding a bagger it'll be it'll be pretty fun i'll go out there i'll do that we'll have a good time and uh get a little vacation out of it go out to california for a couple of days and and then and then he decided he wanted to do it last year and uh and you know i i enjoyed that first race a lot and then last year we had some problems with we didn't get to test as much as what we we would have liked and uh and we just we ran into a lot of problems and then I did a couple endurance races with uh, Twisted Speed Racing on a Suzuki with Brad Burns and Taylor Knapp and those guys. And uh, and then I got the opportunity to go ride at Pittsburgh. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go give it a go. I'll, I'll go see what I can do. And my boss that I was working for, he's he's a big fan of, of racing. And he's a big fan of mine. And uh, it's actually my best friend's uh, father-in-law and so he he was cool with me taking off going racing doing whatever i needed to do and uh but you know this year trying to go back full time do the full series uh i'm i'm i, I had to kind of make the decision on whether i wanted to do it kind of half ass or or full full steam ahead and put everything i could could give to the program and everything uh so you know i, I made the decision to quit working and spend more time on the bicycle running 
riding, doing all that so I can make the most of it. Yeah, I've actually seen that uh, I saw your Strava kick back up again. I'm like, wow, Hayden's getting on it. Yeah, yeah, I went and I went and bought a bought a smart trainer. I got a Tac X uh, for the back of the bike and got Zwift. And you know, uh, the weather isn't super awesome to go ride bicycles outside right now here. So been uh, and I've I've always hated riding inside. I've always hated working out inside. I wanted to be outside in the weather. And mm -hmm. so, uh, the, the Zwift stuff, I've never tried it before, but it's been, man, it's, it's cool getting on that stuff and actually riding with other people and, and, uh, getting your butt whooped whenever you haven't been riding in two years. And I bet it's a, it's a good time. So Sean, just so you're a little clear on this, when, when, when he would come out to stay at, at Hayes's place in Oceanside, this guy would ride bicycles more than anybody I've ever seen. Now, I haven't hung out entirely for a winter with, with JD Beach, so I don't know what kind of miles he puts in. I mean, I see him on Strava every once in a while, but I, he, JD seems like the type of guy that doesn't always put it on Strava. But Hayden would just randomly ride from San Diego to Orange County and ride back and ride to who knows where, but he was constantly on that bicycle, and that had to have been the fittest you've ever been, was it? I, I wouldn't say... I was, I was, I was really fit on a bicycle and, but at that time I was, you know, I was drinking a lot and like, so I was, and I was eat, like drinking milkshakes and stuff all the time and eating ice cream and everything. So I went and rode bicycles all the time just to keep all that weight off. And, right. and, and like, like I was out there, I didn't, other than Josh and uh, like Jake Lewis or whoever else would be out there, I didn't have anybody to really hang out with. Mm -hmm. I just, I'd go get on a bicycle just cause I had nothing better to do. Right. And you know, it's like, I, I grew up growing up in Kentucky. We, where I'm at, it's Western Kentucky. So it's all just flat and farmland and everything. And so going out there and, and going able to ride up in the hills and in the mountains and stuff, it's just, it's cool to kind of go explore. And it's a lot different whenever you're exploring on a bicycle versus like in a car or something like that. And, uh, yeah, no, whenever I was living out there, I was kind of crazy about it. I just, I, I mean, I just loved riding my bicycle then and, uh, I'm hoping I can kind of get back into that, but we'll see. I don't, I don't know if I've got the, I don't know if my butt can handle all those miles anymore. Getting old. You alluded to it. You, you did, I don't know exactly what it was, but you made some big changes in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, 2000, 2018 kind of everything kind of changed. Uh, I met summer, uh, and I decided I kind of needed to chill out a little bit and, and then grow up with hair and, uh, work on what life's going to be after racing. And, and, and so I stopped, I stopped drinking as much, um, which now, heck, I don't, I hardly, I, I might drink like I might have a drink once a month or something, if that. Right. And, uh, you know, started eating healthy um, and tried to stay fit. And now, now I've got, now we're married and we've got a four month old. And now I definitely have to stay fit because I got to be able to live for a long time so I can make sure he's good and I got to stay healthy. So, you know, whenever I'm 60, 70, I can hang out with the grandkids and, do all that good stuff so now i have to stay healthy you know hayden it's funny i talked to i think it was maybe in october um i talked to jd i, I got in touch with him because i you know i saw i think i got congratulated him when it, it, he mentioned that he was back with estenson and i i got in touch with him and said you know awesome news of course but at the same time you know lamenting the fact that he wasn't back in our series and he said you know he'd look for some options and he said but you know Hayden's going to be racing and so I, I knew about it back then it's funny I was talking to your team owner Jesse Wilco about that again among other things last night and he said yeah we've had it planned for a while it was just kind of putting things together so you've kind of known you were going to do this for a little while um is, is that right that you you've been planning for it somewhat yeah yeah uh, I kind of I he, he's been on the this has been on the table for a while and then uh 
I knew Terry was wanting to do some more bagger stuff and I knew the series was kind of going to get a little bit bigger. They were going to have more races for the baggers. And, and then I had another bagger uh, team kind of on the table for a little bit, but, <clears throat> but now, you know, in the past, whenever I was racing, I didn't really think about the money and everything as much uh, because it was just me and all I had to take care of was myself and my van. And uh, now I've got, we've we've been building a building a house and we've got the baby and we've i've got her and we've got to do insurance and bills and all that stuff so now it's it's kind of been more whatever whatever could provide uh the most for my family is kind of where that's that's where everything's kind of pushing me right now and uh with jesse he was kind of he was able to offer me you know the best deal and and the best opportunity to do that and uh, and then because of being in the sewer bike class and all that, you know, sponsors and everything have been a little bit easier to come by, um, and running a full season and, and doing all that kind of stuff is just, <clears throat> it's made, it, it made the choice a little bit easier for me. Um, whereas in the past I would do kind of, just, I would do what I thought would be more fun. And now, which I, I know riding a thousand will be a ton of fun, uh, I will most likely get my butt whooped on the, every occasion, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, and I'm, we haven't got the super bike program figured out, uh, quite yet as far as what bikes we're running and everything. But I know, I know if we get to the point where we have full blown super bikes, it's going to be awesome. I've just, I've, you know, my whole life I've, uh, I've always wanted to ride a, a, a real super bike and, um, so having the opportunity to possibly do that this year is, is really cool. And that, that made the decision really easy for me. I just, I've, I've always wanted to ride a super bike. This is kind of the only shot I've ever had at it. And, and, you know, I definitely want to try and go out and win that super stock championship. So we'll, we'll see how that goes and we'll see. I know that class is super deep. It was, it was a fun race last year at Pittsburgh and uh, I know I've gone back and watched a bunch of the races and those guys, they fight hard for it. And that's, you know, that's what I grew up doing. I, I like the fight and uh, you know, I, I want to come out here and give it all that I can. You know, this is a point that I w really want to emphasize too. And you mentioned this about the super bike. So I, I may try to make it clear in the story I did earlier this week and people picked up on it and really understood it, that the fact that you're going to be racing in stock 1000 on one bike, and you're going to be racing in super bike on an, actually a different bike, you're going to have two different, two different spec motorcycles. So this is not stock 1000 and super bike cup, like a, a lot of guys do. And that's a great program too. And it kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, a few weeks ago in an all hands meeting that we had at Moto America, um, our COO Chuck had emphasized or mentioned the fact that they want to try to put some emphasis on riders that can, you know, can race both classes and it doesn't have to be you race your stock 1000 bike in, in Superbike Cup that that has its advantages, tires and things like that, but yeah. you can actually race in both. And, you know, we always hear these fans that talk about how back in the day, you know, Miguel would do them, would race and obviously 600 and, and super bike. And a lot of guys did that, but you know, they, back then it was only two races. So you on some weekends will be racing four races and at the least you're going to be racing three races. Um, so you talk about your fitness. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tall task, but Certainly, be, like you said, being able to be on a superbike this year, full-on superbike is is going to be cool for you. you you've got to be really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, I am, and and I mean that's that's I grew up watching those guys. I grew up watching Nikki, Tommy, uh, Roger, Aaron Yates, Duhamel, uh, Maladin, Spees. I grew up watching those guys race multiple classes, and and uh, you know I've, I've actually. <clears throat> I've actually still got some VHS tapes of uh, races in road Atlanta uh, from like Oh one and everything. And uh, I've gone every now and then I'll go back and I'll watch those races just to kind of see how it was. And man, it was, it's just, it's so cool. Cause those guys are riding everything they possibly could. And, and it's, it's cool to see the series kind of get kind of trying to push that again. Um, you know, I know it's, it, it is difficult with, you know, this day and age, it's hard to, hard to, you know, so the sponsors aren't quite there as like they, what, what they used to be, but 
um, you know, seeing people put that effort in is just, is really cool. Uh, you know, coming from that era of watching those guys do that week in and week out. And so to be able to try and do that this year, I know it's going to be tough. Uh, it's, it's funny taking those two years kind of off and riding a big bike or riding a 600 or a thousand, <clears throat> my, my riding, uh, fitness actually didn't really go away. Um, my, just my overall fitness was, it hasn't been there and, and, you know, I've been a little bit bigger than what I should be. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, like Pittsburgh and stuff, it, it just, where I was in 2019 and 2018, you know, I could take off the start and be right up to speed and go. And where last year at Pittsburgh, I noticed whenever the race kind of got started, it took me a couple laps to get going. Um, but then once I got going, I could, I could do that same, that same pace every lap, every lap, every lap. And, and I know doing the couple endurance races I did with those guys last year helped with that. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping I can just get that, that instant get up and go speed back. Um, and then hopefully get a little bit more, get a little bit more outright speed too, just with being a little bit more fit and being on the bike more and actually, uh, you know, getting to do some testing and ride a lot. So we'll see. I think it's definitely going to be tough, you know, riding, doing two super bike races and then two stock races or one stock race, however many it is, depending on the weekend, it's definitely going to be tough, but I'm, I'm really excited about doing it. Uh, you know, whenever we did the stock, the stock thousand stuff in 2017 and 2016, we kind of did that where we, we would do two races a day. And, uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed that personally. I, I like that because the second race I always seemed to do a little bit better. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of doing that same kind of stuff this year. So we'll just, we'll, we're going to see how it goes and, uh, you know, it's not going to be easy by any means. All these guys are so fast and, uh, watching the races last year, especially super bike. I'm, I'm going to be in over my head for a while. So we'll see how quick I can get up to speed and, and how bad I get my butt whooped off of that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was looking at the photo. We, we used some of the photos of when you were at Pittsburgh last year and when you were there and we came around to talk to you in the, your pit, your paddock area, I didn't realize until I looked at those photos and study them, studying that you were wearing the leathers that you actually wore back when you were doing that man van thing with cycle world. Yeah, so those yeah. were a couple year old leathers and you fit into them still. So that was all good. Oh, they were snug. They were pretty <laughs> snug. There wasn't, there wasn't much more room left in them. The zipper was screaming, Sean. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So, but I want to ask you because we remember the battles that you had with, with, uh, with JD in super sport. And one of the things that was always interesting with you on that bike is you used to have some issues with the clutch, which I always took it to must mean that, you know, you're a bigger guy and it's a smaller bike. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't really ask you this last year at Pittsburgh, but I would assume being on a GSXR 1000, the bike must feel just a lot better for you. And it just must be a bike that fits you better than a little super sport bike. Would you say that's true? Um, you know, whenever I rode the 600, I, I, I thought I fit on the bike really good. It was just, you know, the, the straightaway speed I struggled with just cause the bike didn't, I couldn't get tucked in quite as tight as what I needed to. And then, you know, the bike didn't have the ump. Uh, but as far, I mean, just cornering and everything, I felt awesome on that 600. And, uh, I know last year on the thousand, it definitely was nice having the, the little bit of get up that that bike has compared to the 600. Uh, and you know, I've, I've, I've only ever raced as far as thousands go. I've only ever raced a Suzuki. So it was, it was kind of a known bike for me. So I was able to hop on it and go pretty easily. Um, but it's definitely, it definitely doesn't hurt that it's got all that extra power to, to push my big butt around. <laughs> When you showed up at Pittsburgh, um, did you did you think you would do as well as you did? It, it kind of surprised us a little bit, and I'm sure it surprised other people in the paddock. But did, this, did it surprise you, or did, is that what you expected was to run at the front? Um, 
I I don't know really. Um, I was going into it just to have fun, and you know, in my head, I wanted to run with Jake and Travis and uh, and like Michael and and Corey and all those guys. I didn't know exactly where I'd slot in, having not been on the bike and and not raced in a while. Uh, but I knew I knew if I was fully fit and and been on the bike all the time and everything, I knew I could run with those guys if I, if if not battle with them and beat them um so it it didn't surprise me a ton it surprised me that i was able to go the full race distance and and like was kind of getting to where i was tracking the guys down towards the end of the races uh but i wish i really wish and i've talked about it with jesse uh i wish i would have had i wish i would have taken off work friday and uh and gone up there and got the practice and qualifying and everything in Friday to really see where I would have slotted in and, and had had the bike really dialed in and set up and be able to really make a run at it for the races. But, you know, it's, that's just, you know, it happened like that and I had to work and, uh, that's yeah, right. I, com- I completely forgot that. I mean, that makes it doubly as impressive. <laughs> yeah. And, and I like, I love it. I love going back and watching that race. Cause uh, you know, growing up, um, whenever I was doing flat track as a kid, uh, Danny Walker would come into the, the races and, and he'd sit there and he would bet like me and JD and my brothers, uh, he'd get, he'd bet us like 50 bucks or 20 bucks or something every race. If we jumped the line and then have to go all the way back to the back and then he'd bet us 20 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it was, uh, if we could if we could win after jumping the line and going to the back. And, uh, so it, it like brought back a lot of memories having to fight, kind of fight back through the pack like that. Uh, and so I, and I enjoy those kind of races. It makes like, it, as, and as a rider, whenever you kind of get into that groove and you're able to just kind of click laps off like that, and you're able to make passes and, uh, you know, kind of put the bike wherever you want to put the bike, it makes you like, it, it really, reminds you what you why you love racing and and why you love doing what you're doing and uh you know I've always I've always enjoyed road racing because you once you get into that rhythm and you can hold it it's the, like there's no better feeling on a motorcycle than just putting in laps and just going fast and uh so that's I I loved that stock thousand race last year it, it was such a blast and and uh yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping I can kind of put that same type of runs in this year, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, I've been as as Sean mentioned earlier, I've been doing these these series of stories where I look back on Daytona 200s, and I'm kind of at that I'm at that point where it's like you know uh, Bobier and Gagne and JD and those guys Garrett, those guys are the the guys that are at the front in the Daytona 200. And I noticed yesterday because I knew we were going to do this podcast, I'm like that's weird that Hayden's not in any of these results or these races. And then I saw in your press release this morning, when I look back and look back at it and you've never done a Daytona 200, what, what was going on during those years? And forgive me for not knowing, but what was going on during those years that those guys were racing in the Daytona 200 and they're kind of like your group, but you weren't there. Um, well, so the last time we ran at Daytona, it was what 14 2014 i believe yeah yep uh so i was only at that time i was you know in 2011 2012 uh 2013 i was still in high school uh or somewhat in high school and i wasn't man i and i look back on it all the time and i i wasn't really focused on racing back then and mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just, I was wanting to be a kid and having grown up racing and everything. I missed a lot of stuff, uh, that I now looking back, I would not change it for the world. Uh, but whenever, you know, back then I wanted to just hang out with my friends and, and stay, stay at home and do all this other stuff and not go work out, not go ride. Um, and so, you know, I never got the, because I wasn't putting in the work and the effort, I, I never got the opportunity to do it. Uh, I was always there. I was in the, but I was, you know, I was just in the other class, the other 600 class, not the, not the big boy class. So, uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. This is going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really tough. Um, 
Yeah, uh, like like I said, I, right now I'm big. I'm I'm bigger <laughs> than I need to be, which I'm always bigger than I need to be. I need to always be smaller, but especially for a 600. So that track, it's a it's a big horsepower track, and uh, and you know I've never done all that great there, but I've also never really worked all that hard to do great there. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to riding with all the guys that are going to be out there. I know it's going to be it's going to be a lot of competition, a lot of fun. And, and I'm interested to see how this new like rules package and everything, how all the bikes end up, what bike ends up being kind of at the top, uh, by the end of the day. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to, for sure, to see who's at the front, who's kind of mid pack, who's, who's where and what bike's going to do what, you know, if, if a certain bike's going to have to make up all their time on the infield or if there's a certain bike that's going to make up all their time on the banking and uh yeah it's going to be it's going to be a ton of fun i'm i'm really looking forward to it i know uh i haven't got to see a lot of people uh in a while so i'm looking forward to seeing everybody and getting back down to daytona and get out of this crap weather that we've got going on uh yeah so it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun when you talk about the fact that you're big and you don't have to tell me how big but do you do you do you go into this like I need to be 170 pounds or I need to be 180? Do you have a, a weight goal? Is that how you do, look at that, or do you feel it like from just a fitness level and the rest of it takes care of itself? Um, it's it's for me it's a weight goal. Um, you know, in the past, whenever I was racing against JD and uh, like Bobby and all those guys, I tried to be around 175 on the 600, um, and because if I got if I go any lower than that, I start I start getting, you know, real weak and, uh, and I start losing strength and everything. And so I, I'm trying to go into it at there to be honest, I, there ain't no way I'm getting down to 175. I can tell you that, uh, I've got, I've got a long ways to go to get there. Uh, it's just, I know whenever I was with ridiculous, we did, we would go to utah and we'd see this uh sport this sport coach um he was the sport coach the like the sports doctor for the uh bmc uh bicycling team mm -hmm. the tour de france guys um and he told me that i retained muscle whenever i wasn't working out because every season as soon as i stopped riding my bicycle within a week i'd blow up 20 pounds right and uh, and so right now I haven't really worked out and I mean, like I should have in two years. So I'm, I'm a little bit big and I know I'm down a few pounds already just in the first, just in the last week or two. And, uh, been drinking a lot of smoothies and, and a lot of water and no more, no more sugary snacks all the time. I told summer, I was like, we got to cut that out. And, uh, <laughs> So it's, it's, it's going to be tough, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what, what we can do. And, and uh, I know with the rules package changing and the bikes being able to be a little bit faster, I'm hoping that helps a hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, like I said, it's the, the 200, I, I want to go and I want to win. Uh, I know right now for me, it's a tall order. Um, but for me, really, the 200 is – one of those bucket list things as a racer that you want to do and 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 having the opportunity to finally do it after after being pro for the last 10 years uh it's it's really exciting and I'm, I'm glad that i've finally got a chance to go do it and and hopefully hopefully you know if if everything goes good and, and we have a good result and we can build off of that and look towards next year's 200 and see if we can make a real run for it or Heck, I mean, heck, I don't know. We, we might end up going down there and winning the whole thing. Who knows? But That's right. You don't know. Yeah, but, you know, it's – it's for me right now, it's a good baseline. It's a good starting point. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get to go down there and I'll get to race against some guys that I'm going to be racing against full this full season. So, uh, to kind of get on track with them and see, see what I can do with them, uh, you know, because – a 600 is just a little bit it's just smaller than a 1000 not by a lot and you know everybody's strengths are gonna every, i think everybody's strengths are kind of amplified on a 600 whenever you're really good at something on a 1000 you're gonna be great at it on a 600 so 
seeing seeing where everybody's strengths are and everything on the 600s will help a lot going into the full season. Well, you can always, I always think back to, uh, there was one, they always did Dunlop tire test before, before race week at, at Daytona in the off season. And I remember Anthony Gobert, when he was riding the Vance and Heinz Ducati showed up and literally, I think they had to lay him on the table to get the zipper up on his leathers. And <laughs> I asked him what was going on and he said, mate, I just want to be as fat as I can to show these guys I can beat them even when I'm fat. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't recommend that, but it can be done. Oh yeah. He's a little shorter than I am. Right. <laughs> yeah. His, his heavy wasn't as heavy. Yeah. You're a bigger yeah. dude. Oh yeah. But no, that's, that's a pretty good story. And I, I yeah, I remember Goward. He's, he was always, and as a, as a younger kid, you know, I, I always looked up to that. I was like, oh, he don't, he doesn't give a rip. He just, <laughs> he just got out there and ride. And I'm like, that's, that's how I want to be. Right. <laughs> now, as I'm getting older, I'm like, man, you can't be like that anymore. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, um, Hayden, we don't know yet what Jake Lewis is doing this year. Um, that part of his deal, his deal hasn't been announced yet, but obviously he, is defending or well he won last year's stock 1000 and superbike cup championship and he's your sort of neighbor he's one of part of the owb gang so mm -hmm. there's a little bit of honor to uphold there probably this year with you maybe coming away with that championship uh, like jake did last year has he has he rubbed that in your face at all oh no 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 uh <laughs> since he knows you know, better up, up up until up until this announcement kind of happened i i i'd talk to jake every now and then uh but we haven't talked about racing and uh and i've been kind of waiting to see what he's doing been doing i know m4 is kind of holding off on they haven't said who's riding their bikes yet so and i know with him being affiliated with them in the past I, that that's kind of where my head's going uh so it's uh like like last night i texted him i was like when are you guys announcing what you got going on <laughs> and uh he hasn't answered me yet so we'll i'm, I'm hoping they announce it soon because uh you know me and him we haven't got to race a whole lot uh in our professional careers and <clears throat> like last year at that race in pittsburgh I, I still didn't get to really race with him because he was you know he got to, he was starting at the front and and uh by the time I was getting my stuff going, it was already too late in the race. And, uh, you know, I was super pumped to see him get back out there and win that championship like he did and, and, you know, show everybody that me and him and the guys from Owensboro, we've still got, we've still got some fight left in us, the guys from Kentucky. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm hoping, I'm hoping whatever he's got going on this year is something really good for him. I'd like to see him, I'd like to see him get back on a sewer bike. I know he's got some unfinished business in sewer bike and uh, I'd like to see him go out there and do really well. And, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'll get to be on track with him. Hopefully I get to race with him a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm hoping me and him have really good years this year. And, and if he doesn't end up racing in stock thousand, you know, I'm, I'm happy to try and take that mantle from him. So we'll, we'll see. It's, it's going to be interesting for sure. I know it's going to be a tough season and, uh, and a long season, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being back and, and looking forward to the fight ahead. Uh, that's, you know, that's always been my thing with racing is as long as there's a fight for me, I'll be, I'll be happy doing it. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, man, I'm excited to be back it's it's been hard the last couple of years to sit there and watch watch the races from the sideline on my on my phone or my laptop and uh yeah i'm just i'm really excited to get back out there last year you were at pittsburgh you were number 77 are you going to be back to 69 again this year yeah yeah i've uh so i was kind of debating on running 69 or not um i uh yeah, after last year and the year before, you know, I didn't get to run 69 uh, because of, you know, just getting signed up and all that. And it's, right. and then Terry, Terry wanted to run 79 on the Harley. So um, that's right. 
So I ran 79 on the Harley and, and then 69 wasn't available because JD had ran, uh, at Brainerd, uh, he ran 69. So I couldn't run 69 last year. And, uh, so I ran 77 and then this year, uh, 69 was available. Uh, I thought about running 95, uh, just in case JD ever wanted to come back, then I'd have it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think this year, um, I think this year I'm, I'm, I'm running 69 and I think, I think just from the way things have gone, I think this will be my last year running 69, uh, full time. I know, uh, you know, just with, with Nikki having passed a few years ago and, and now, uh, uncle Earl passing away. I think, I think it's time for me to hang up 69 and, and let it, let it lay to rest. You know what though, Hayden, as a, as a fan, I mean, I'm sure Paul feels the same way. We're thrilled that you're doing. I mean, it's obviously such a testament to Nikki, but now of course your uncle Earl that you're, you're going to continue that number. Um, and I'm glad at least you're running it for this year and give it its, its due justice because those guys would always want to see that, that number on a track somewhere. So that's, that's a huge uh, honor that you're doing for that, that family and for your family, I should say. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm planning on putting it at the front as much as I can and uh, give it a good send off for me. I want to ask you a little bit about King of the Baggers last year. So we recently had um, uh, Kyle Wyman on and it's interesting. So he's, he's given up Superbike for a little bit to go into uh, King of the Baggers full time. Of course, he's a factory Harley Davidson rider and it's a dream for him having, having such a heritage in his family with Harley Davidson. And you, you did have that one race at Pittsburgh in stock 1000, but you were racing, you've raced a couple of years in King of the Baggers and now you're switching over and you're going to be in Superbike. So you're kind of doing the opposite of what Kyle did, but I do want to talk about your time in King of the Baggers and riding that bike. What was it like? Did you, did you enjoy riding that? And did it feel like a proper race motorcycle when you were going around the track on that? Yeah. Yeah. It honestly, those bikes go around the track a whole lot better than what you would think. Uh, mm -hmm. I know, I know with, with the Vance Hines guys, we didn't, the biggest problem with us was we didn't, uh, you know, Harley and, and Terry kind of split their split ways. And, uh, so Terry lost a little bit of funding. Uh, so, it was a little bit difficult last year um, because we didn't get to do all the testing we needed to do. Um, you know, in, in Atlanta, uh, we had so many problems that the only session I even got to ride was the race. And, uh, and it was just, it was me and, and one mechanic, Mike, uh, working on the bike. Uh, <laughs> I got to help him swap a couple of Harley, uh, Harley motors and those things are 170 pounds, uh, you know, and, and so we had some difficulties in Atlanta and then road America, we had a couple problems, but we ended up getting it on the podium, which was through a little bit of luck, you know, a couple guys broke and, uh, and then Laguna, we kind of, we actually got our first full weekend of the bike running really good. And, you know, already that was the last race of the season. And, um, and then by then everybody, oh my gosh, everybody was going so fast at Laguna last year. And it was such a, it was just such a difficult race. Uh, and, you know, there was still a lot of stuff left that needed to be done. Like the, our rear sets were still kind of up in front of us in the traditional bagger position where everybody else had moved theirs back more like a race bike. And, uh, and I know that gave everybody a little bit more ground clearance and, and, uh, you know, swapping side to side on the bikes was easier, is easier like that because ours, we were kind of having to pull ourselves up and then move side to side and then kind of let ourselves back down. So it was kind of wearing us out a little bit. And, uh, I know I talked to Taylor Knapp yesterday, uh, about it and he's already got to go test the bike a little bit. And he said they've, they've made some, made some good changes on it. He said they've still got quite a ways to go, but he said they've changed a bunch of stuff, uh, like move the rear sets back and, and uh, I know he said something about they got some new suspension for it. So I'm hoping they do really well this year. Uh, it's, a, it's a bummer that I'm not able to be on it with them. I loved working with those guys. And, uh, you know, Terry Terry welcomed me with open arms. And I loved working with Terry, working with Mike, working with uh, Gene uh, and, and all the guys over there. I, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, 
I would definitely ride a bagger again. It was a they're they're honestly they're so much fun to ride around the track. Uh, they actually track really good and and they're super they're pretty smooth to for the most part. You know, some little bumps here and there will kind of throw you off a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, I and and I understand why Kyle's making that switch. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure not having to run his own program that all that stress of running your own program. Uh, you know, I, I ran my own program for two years in 16 and 17 and, uh, not, and nowhere near the scale at what he was. So I know what that stress is kind of like. And, um, and I think it's, I think it's the right move for him at this time, just to kind of lay back and, and not be so stressed out trying to run baggers and sewer bike trying to run his own program and then also do all the Harley stuff. I think, I think he's going to really enjoy, you know, kind of being a little bit more relaxed and being able to just focus on what he's got going with the bagger and with the Harley guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to see. I know, I know those guys are putting a lot of money into it and, and are bringing a lot of people into the sport. I know that class uh, is helping, helping the fan fans show up, uh, you know, at those couple of races last year, the, the amount of Harleys and Indians that were at the track was pretty insane. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to be a part of it. I'm glad I got to be a part of the inaugural race and, uh, kind of get the fans into it right off the bat. So, uh, it's cool to see. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it just keeps growing and keeps bringing more fans into it. And, uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Okay, Hayden Gillum, we've come to the part, part of the podcast where I'm going to tell you a story. Well, and I'm going to tell Paul the story too, but I- I, I can text- listen? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. I told Hayden yesterday to texting. I said, I got to tell you a story during the podcast. So we're, let, here we go. So the last time we had you on the podcast, you were, I think you were in Kenya. You were on a mission, a, a faith mission, which was cool. And you were looking at Kilimanjaro or going up it. And I was telling you all about that journey, that, uh, no, sorry, that uh, Toto song, Africa. And oh, yeah. you said you hated it until I started giving you the lyrics and you realized it was kind of a spiritual song. And you're like, yeah, I kind of like that now. So I got another one for you. Um, Hayden, are you familiar with the band Journey? I'm sure you must be. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you know the song Stone in Love? I don't okay so you got to look this song up and i'm just gonna i'm not gonna sing this to you but i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i'd love love for you to sing (laughs) no not me not me (laughs) but i will read you the the chorus it goes those summer nights are calling stone in love can't help myself i'm falling stone in love that has got to be your song for the summer (laughs) and summer your wife see it's perfect it's got, oh it's, got your it's got your baby stone. You got you to gotta play that before you go out for every race this year. And by the way, it's a great song and it's truly Steve Perry, one of his finest. So, um, awesome. and Summer, I just got to have a shout out to her. I can say this to Hayden because he knows where my heart is, but the girl, I call her the girl with the smiling eyes because whenever I look at her, she's just, she just looks like she's always happy and smiling. So um, I picture that all the time now that you have the baby and um, it's great. You're going to have the three of you guys at the track this year and can't, can't wait to see you guys, but uh, fire up that journey song. And before you go out on the track and I, you're guaranteed to win, I think. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to listen to it right away. I'm going to let her have her sit down and listen to it with me. We'll, we'll see what you got brewing here. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I don't even know if I can close. I'm so choked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, listen, his wife's name is Summer. The, ba- the baby's name is Stone. I mean, it's just, it's such, and, and Hayden. I mean, it's like just a, a cool grouping of names. They sound like a bunch of motorcycling hippies, I guess, which is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's all well, I want to, uh, I want to thank you, Hayden, for coming on the show this morning. And again, we told you how excited we are to have you back in the series and and I, I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are excited as well. So welcome back. Um, glad you were able to uh, to quit that day job and become a motorcycle racer full time again. I know you've got some training ahead of you and some weight to lose, but I have few doubts that you'll be able to pull that off and show up at Daytona in great shape and ready to go. So uh, thanks for coming on. And, and Sean, thank you all, as always. Uh, Thanks for the story there at the end. Um, I, it's going to make me go listen to the damn song. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to, 
to seeing you guys and working with you guys and, and being back at the racetrack. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to be in that press conference every race. Absolutely. I so. Hey, I want to just re real quickly throw in here, especially now that Hayden's back and better than ever racing in Superbike as well as Stock 1000, that you know, the fans out there, you, there are a lot of Hayden Gillum fans, a lot of fans of the boys from Owensboro. So absolutely get out, go to our website and sign up for uh, our Live Plus streaming subscription service. It's right now at a preseason price real good price. And also you can get your tickets for all of our rounds. You can go to our calendar and each of our rounds has a little button that says tickets. Just click on that and whichever ones you want to go to. And hopefully you go to all of them and tour the country like we do. And uh, when you can't be at the track, or even if you're there, definitely sign up for live plus because uh, Daytona is part of that this year. And there's even it's 11 rounds instead of 10. And we're offering even more than we have in the past. So um, there's a lot of great stuff coming up and from the broadcast point of view and also uh, being able to see our races. So um, just wanted to get that in there. And, and Hayden, people are you're going to be having people knock down the doors to get tickets to see you race because you're a fan favorite for sure. And thanks again for being on with us. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. All right, boys. Have a good day. Hey, see you guys.